Does this correspond to a rotation around 45 degrees? I showed you how to build the matrix for 45 degrees in detail, multiplying the matrix onto the stress tensor from the left, the non-transposed one from the right, the transposed one will give you sigma one plus sigma three half on the diagonals. Sigma two is unchanged because we rotate around the two direction and sigma one minus sigma three half on the diagonal. Okay, so the new stress is symmetric. The transformation matrix is anti-symmetric, plus and minus. Okay, this is how it looks when you when we ask you to rotate your stress cube. Now, extrema from the normal stress on the surface. Which which are the extrema now? Are the extrema the sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, or are the extreme normal stresses the sigma one plus sigma three half and the sigma one plus sigma three half on the second diagonal or the sigma two? We never know. I have noise in the background. I hope this is not disturbing you too much. So extreme normal stress. Previously, we found that the stress. Give me a second. This noise is disturbing me. Just garbage is collected outside of my house. Now they are gone. Okay. Previously, we found that the sigma, which I also sketched for you, the sigma, the normal stress, is coming from the uh, unit vector components n1 square sigma 1, n2 square sigma 2, n3 square uh, sigma 3. And you can eliminate by using the normalization condition. So one of the components can be expressed as a function of the other two. So this is the norm of the normal vector, minus n1 square minus n2 square gives you n3 square. Now, when you insert this, then we get sigma 1 minus sigma 3 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 plus sigma 3 for sigma. Sigma was the normal stress as I sketched it and as it was on the previous slide. Now, and the normal stress is extreme when you derive it with respect to the one component or the two component and the, the derivative is zero. For shear stress, we also use that trick. And this results in sigma one minus sigma three equals sigma two minus sigma three must be zero. And from that, you get n1, n2 equals zero and n3 equals one. So this can only be fulfilled if n1 and 2 components are zero and the n3 component is one. Okay, and this is actually the principal direction corresponding to sigma three. The sigma one and sigma two components can be found in a different way. So if we have sorted our eigenvalues, the stresses, the normal stresses are bound by sigma one, which is the maximum, and by sigma three, which is the minimum. This is what this symbol here says. So this means the sorting, and this means any normal stress can only be smaller or equal than sigma one, or larger or equal sigma three. Okay, so it's almost the same, but note here is no index. Sigma stands for arbitrary normal stress, whereas sigma one and sigma three stand for the maximum and minimum eigenvalue. Okay, so now in this section, finally, I have shown you what is the extreme normal stress. The maximum is sigma one. We could have guessed that before, but now we have shown it by mathematical derivation. And sigma three is the minimum, and all normal stresses can only be in between. That also means if you have any stress in any coordinate system, there can not be a normal stress which is larger than the maximum eigenvalue or smaller than the minimum eigenvalue. Okay, now that was the normal stresses. The shear stresses were given here. Maximum shear stress is sigma one minus sigma three. That's the maximum of all the three different solutions which we got after sorting. 